misty mountains cold to dungeons deep and caverns old the pines were roaring on the height the winds were moaning Hello and welcome to another Top Table video. You're joined by me, Jay, and it's tournament weekend. It is Stockport in flames. So this weekend is a doubles event run by Jamie Giblin and Harry. And I'm partnered with Steve, so could be better. But you know, going to be a good fun weekend. We're taking some Goblin Town and Gundabad. And I'm looking forward to throwing some dice. And we do have a guest here who really doesn't want to be on camera, but he's going to be. We have the wonderful Thomas Macklin. How are you doing, man? I don't know, you're right. You're good. You're crashing yeah. here this weekend. Yeah, definitely. We had a curry last night. We did. We did. Good we fun. Did. So, what you uh, what's what are you playing this weekend? Uh, we've got Eisen God. Me and Mark Furness have got Eisen God. He's got Siege of Helms Deep. I've sort of got more of a scouty, scouring of Westfold sort of themed, uh, yeah, list with some ferals in it. But yeah, so it's it is themed. Mm, is it? Is it, <laughs> is it really? It is <laughs> There's no shaming or anything. He taught me off the ledge. So yeah, I was gonna bring one, but he's like, "That's no, a doubles tournament. Don't worry." Like, <laughs> he taught me off the ledge. <laughs> he taught me off the ledge. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but no, it should be good fun. It should be good fun. Ricky, we've got six games this weekend, yep. and uh, you're gonna win the spoon and most spurting. That's a uh, standard Macklin prizes right there. Well, technically, yeah, but Mark's pretty good, so he might he might bring, he might drag me down, so to speak. <laughs> drag you up. <laughs> drag me That's up, not yeah. good, is it? <laughs> no, the prize is sweet for the spoon. Exactly. <laughs> I have to teach him. Absolutely. Teach him the ways of the wooden spoon. Good. Well, yeah. cheers, man. No, right. So yeah, it's going to be a good fun weekend, we've got six games, I'm looking forward to it. I've not played a Hobbit tournament since, oh god, I think it was doubles at Ardacon. Which one was first, Ardacon or Scouring? Uh, Scouring was first. Yeah, so I've not played since, yeah, Ardacon then, so looking forward to it. I always have good fun with Steve, we're just going to take the mick, I don't think we're going to try and win too much. And yeah, what we'll do is we'll keep you posted with our games uh, as they're coming in. We'll let you know who we're playing, we'll have a chat with them before and after. We'll let you see the boards, the armies, all the cool stuff and we'll keep you updated looking at the tournament and why you should get yourself to a GBHL event. Alright, I'll see you in a minute. So we're back, uh, we've just finished game two. We couldn't get in after game one because we played to time. Yes. So we literally dived straight into the second game. game. Yeah, but we've been two really good games. Yeah. Uh, first game we played Ben and Mike. Yeah, good fun. They're it from was. GW, was. they've come dressed in wicked uh, beards. and. <laughs> Dressed as dwarves, yeah. yeah. They've got double iron hills. Double iron hills, Dane, captains, there was crossbows in there. Dane's captains, crossbows, mattocks. Wasn't looking couple good. Couple of goats. Yeah, a couple of goat riders. Wasn't looking good. Uh, first turn of shooting. Yeah, we took, was it? Three. Just literally shot yeah. three Gundabans off, so they turned around and ran the other way. Yeah, uh, There was a clever little deployment trick. The, the crossbows were like three ranks back mm. and not in base contact, and we were like. Okay, we're well good, we can just go straight at them. And then literally the first rank moved out of the way and the second rank backed up yeah. onto the crossbows. It was cool actually. Yeah, it was. It, was. it hurt. <laughs> it it kind of, it turned, I think, because of our numbers. We got a lot of goblins. Uh, I think we yeah. were like maybe 70 mark or something like that. We're playing Storm the Camp as well. Storm the Camp get the corners. corners. So that split their force up, which hurt them more than it hurt mm. us because we've got so many numbers. And I was able to march over and get over to the Gunderbats. But yeah, that was, a, that was a cool game. So yeah, we had an interesting thing with Bolg and Dane. Uh, and there was one. Ah, yeah, so yeah. the heroic combat off, Master of Battle, got it for free. And then the next turn, it was kind of like seven Iron Hills Dwarves and Dane on Bolg. Yeah. And uh, he just managed to creep it through and take out Dane. Because yeah. if I lost that fight, he was gone. I think yeah, you did a damage really, in the first. Yeah, I put a wound combat. on him and yeah, yeah. done his fate. But that really give us the left hand side of the board because then Bolg just got to go a bit crazy and yeah. run around. Yeah. That was a good game and it finished uh, eight two. Eight two to us, so that so was yeah, a, a win. That was a win. To uh, the top table. Uh, yeah, top table. Next game uh, was against Josh and Dan. Dan. Yeah. Dan. Yeah. Cracking game. Um, they yeah. had gorgeous, gorgeous gondola. Beautiful gondola. Really, nice. really nice white stone base. Yeah. It was, uh, really, it makes me. I mean, I wanted to get my gondola painted again anyway, but looking at those, I really want to get it done. It was. Gandalf the White, Denethor and a captain, and they had a <laughs> trebuchet, which is terrifying. And a bolt thrower. And a bolt thrower and fountain court. And yeah, dudes. A, a loads of elites and then a bit of chaff just to fill in the gaps. We were pretty lucky because the scenario was contest of champions, so yes. Gandalf the White sat in the centre with Bolg looking at him. Um, 
We then won the heroic move off. Well, Goblin King was in there as well. Goblin King was stood there, exactly. Goblin King deployed next to Bold. We managed to win the very important heroic move. Yeah. Because Gandalf would have just moved away and used magic. Mm -hmm. um, and we just got Bolg and the Goblin King straight onto Gandalf. Support, some banner in there. Some banner behind them supports. Mm -hmm. We tied up everything round. Um, so yeah, they just booted Gandalf in the face, turn one. Was it 12 wounds or something? Stupid Literally, all we, we both um, went up by three strength for piercing strike. Yeah. We're both wounded on twos. Yeah. Like they just, so they, they volleyed Gandalf. Um, which won us the game, really? It kind of did. Uh, they got close to breaking us. I think um, they did well. Yeah, they? They, they put a big hole in us, given yeah. that, they, like, Denethor's not a combat hero. They just had troops mm. and a couple of siege weapons, which killed, like, eight turn one, the trebuchet. Yeah, we, yeah, we left a few stragglers, because they can't shoot the trebuchet they, at a target that is within six inches of their own... Mm. Um, well, anything of their yeah. own. It's like any mm. of their own uh, models they can't target. So we did at the beginning have a few on the like on the flanks stranded, so they were targeting them, and then they were like getting closer. But in the end, we got everything in, so they weren't able to target anything yep. anyway. Um, and the fact that we was able to roll using the goblin scribe to bring goblins on at any yep. board edge, we and got bring, and bring them on where the trebuchet was. We got yeah. eight goblins. <laughs> so the goblin scribe rolled double six turn one. So we threw the will point in as well, and he brought eight goblins on turn <laughs> one on top of the trebuchet, which was fun. But it was a wicked game, but I think after we managed to remove Gandalf, we just kind of, we just, like they only had three small war bands and the siege engines deployed them, and they just wrapped around, and we were about four turns later, we just crunched through it. Yeah, they, they were always chasing the game. Bolg and the King, to be fair to them, in yeah. early, and it was... They were at a deficit after turn one. Um, but they've made a good game of it. I really enjoyed the game. Yeah, they, they, it was good fun. They played it in very good spirits. Yeah, it was a good, we had a good laugh good yeah. considering turn one. But that was a 12 0 win. So we good. are on two wins. Two wins. Going Did, into the last yeah. game of day one. We're not doing too bad on the Malta Battle. So we've hit two mediums. We've hit two mediums two on the Ultra Battle, which you'll probably see covered more extensively in uh, What Nation Unlock. Yes, out. yes. But we are on two wins, and we're getting a bit worried because. We've got a nosebleed here, we're not supposed yeah, to do this. Now one. we're gonna start playing That's all I wanted this weekend. Yeah, now we're gonna start playing the big boys. That's it. Now we're in trouble. We've got no magic, no shooting. Mm. We're basically just like hardy and two big heroes. Yeah. Just yeah. down so, in the pop. So but we'll going into back. game three. Yeah, we'll come back after game three. Uh, so day one. Have a chat. Yeah, so then yeah, and we'll go from there. Let's see how we do. See you in a bit. Alright, so that's it. Day one is over. Three games in the bag. And who do we play third game, mate? Uh, Luke Midgley and Martin Seed. We but did. It's a very grindy sort of, game. Yeah. It was um, so they, each other out. they had a pretty, it was very themey, but also pretty terrifying. They had a yeah. Numenor and Last Alliance self stuff. So it was had, a cool list. They had Elrond and, Elrond and Gilgalad and Isildur and Elendil, and it was really fluffy, but at the same mm -hmm. time, they've got the Bring, yeah. they've got Gilgalad, who's just a pain. Um, They've got Elrond with his nature's wrath. Yes. Um, so obviously we were playing domination. So it ended up the pretty much standard one in the middle and then four corners. Yeah. Um, we kind of threatened quite aggressive with deployment. We put a lot on the middle yeah. where they deployed back. Um, and luckily we sort of we rushed straight over the middle. We had the scribe backfilling the two back ones for us. Yeah, the scribe did alright to begin with. We ended up with like six to eight bodies yeah. on both the back ones, which was really strong. And then we took the top left and we kind of pushed them into the... They didn't want to engage. They were trying to make sure it was on their turns. And we pushed their whole army effectively into the back top left corner, which yeah. was good. I think both both of us, both mm. armies, we were being very cautious. I think they yes. were over-cautious. Over they were, because we knew it. if we broke, we run the risk of everything just yeah. disappearing off the objective. So for us, we wanted to push aggression, but it was almost fake aggression because yeah. we didn't want to just go into a fight because we weren't going to win it. So we were just pushing them back, pushing them back, trying to be as threatening as possible, and then try and engage actually a lot less fights a turn yeah. than we had to, just because we knew as soon as we broke. So we were, we were playing quite defensive, but with a bit of a offensive bluff. And their heroes got yeah. involved quite late. As did um, ours. Like I don't think yeah. any heroes... But, but got... that suited us. It yeah. didn't suit them. They needed to be doing more damage quicker. Yeah. Um, they were taking a couple of pot shots. They only had three bows. Um and we were sticking two goblins in front of Bolg. Um, the shooting didn't get through, which would I think they would have come in if they managed to just. Another, take well, we were really scared of Bolg actually. Yeah, another two turns. I think it would have been a different outcome. Yeah, we'd have totally. been screwed. Um, um, so yeah, so we, I think we played it correctly. Played it, played right it well. well. We broke as we broke. The timer ran out, so it ended that turn. So, so I think we timed it perfect. Yeah. Uh, we were quite lucky because they were starting to really chew through our stuff, but we managed to bag an eight-four win and another good game. It, Even was though it was a slog, it was a long one, but it was a good fun game. Yeah, I played it was both, quite tactical. Both, yeah, I've played both lads before, singles. I've always yeah, had a good yeah. game, so mm. I knew it was going to be a good game. 
wasn't as eventful for the first hour as I would have liked to to have been. I got like itchy feet and yeah, that's yeah. when I ended up just sort of throwing things. There in. was a lot of we were pushing forward, they were pushing back, and in the end, you kind of just went, "Yep, yeah. I'm doing it," and the models just moved out, and we had a bit of a ruck and. Like Bolg died in the last combat of the game, and there was a lot of like heroes. Like the last turn, had like five heroic combats and yeah. just to try and maximise. But no, it was good fun. And somehow we have ended up end of day one on three wins. Three wins. <gasps> Team top table, right? We're doing it. Yeah, but well, yeah. we'll for see. now, tomorrow uh, we'll see. So we've got three more games tomorrow. Um, tomorrow morning we know we're playing, okay. and it is Ed and Will, Ed Ball and Will Champion, yeah. and we are terrified because we've got 70 models and they've got two wizards and two chariots. Two wizards, two chariots, Legolas? Is that it? Is there anything Legolas, else? that's it. Yeah, it's two yeah. chariots and I think a dude on foot and then Legolas, Saruman, Gandalf. But the chariots, and I didn't know this, hmm. if they charge, anything they move through takes three strength six hits. Yeah. Like, they could be killing 15, 20. So we're going to have to really play the scenario, yeah. really play the board, or try and just shut it down. Just try and block them, block them up. But we've had a wicked day one, it's been good fun. It's been awesome. Uh, we just yeah. had a pizza, everyone's having a few beers, people are playing board games and poker. And we're not having beers, though, we're being good. Yeah, we're, we're being sensible for once. Usually yeah. it's me and you being the Larry idiot, but we're doing all right. Uh, so yeah, we're going to hang out for a bit. Yep. And then day two, so we'll let you know how we'll the next three games tomorrow, go tomorrow. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, cheers. See you later. Hey, guys, and welcome to the end of our hobby vlog. Um, we didn't get a chance to sneak off in between games, a lot of games went to time um, and a few things popped up. Uh, unfortunately Jay uh, on day two was only able to play in game one. Um, we had a, a bit of a, an emergency and had to nip off home. Um, no, nothing too serious, everything's fine. Um, but I had to rope in Alan Little, uh, he was one of the Scottish lads who was there supporting his pals uh, over the weekend and he, he you know, you know, very kindly agreed to step in um, just because you know it's a doubles event I could have carried on my own, no one had an issue with it, but it, it's more fun to play. 900 points on your own is a lot to think about, um, and I wanted to have a fun weekend, I didn't want to be, uh, you know, stressed, just thinking about all the different outcomes of moves, etc. So getting someone else in was a big help, so thank you Alan Little, I really do appreciate it. Um, and as it turned out, you're a big help in the end, uh, which I'll come to. So day two, uh, first game we knew we had Ed and Will. Now, a lot of you know uh, Mr. Ed Ball, a fabulous Ed Ball, uh, and Will Champion, a very, very, very good player, very seasoned player, so the pair of them together were a formidable force. They had two chariots, they had Legolas mounted, Saruman mounted, and Gandalf mounted, so it was a really, really tough force, um, and I'll be honest, myself and Jay, going into the game, we kind of thought, we can't win this, we can't win this, you know, is there any way we can sort of, sort of prolong <laughs> their victory or try and snatch a few victory points from them um, and it, it's just a tough it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a force that you look at and like, like I say we did you think you've lost the game before it starts um, which to be honest I kind of regret now I look back and see how the game played out um, and I think we gave them a much better game than we expected to do um, I think Will and Ed sort of they have that game face on and they're very good at, you know, sort of, it's like a poker face. So there's a lot of bluffing. Um, there's a lot of things that will get said that sort of try and sway you to, to make a decision one way or another. Um, and they're really, really good at that. Um, and that's part of tournament play. Um, but in the end, they come very close. We destroyed one chariot. We got the second chariot down to one crew member who was a captain. who We had we had a couple of chances to kill and, and we failed. So it was bad rolling on our, on our half, behalf. Um, if that would have happened, it would have been totally different. Um, also, we had Legolas trapped a couple of times and didn't inflict a wound, I don't think. Um, we managed to get in eventually on his leader and didn't inflict a wound. Um, so it, it, it was quite close in the end. Um, I think, like I say, that force for them, they did extremely well with it. They were only beaten the whole weekend by the uh, overall winners of the weekend. So they did extremely well. Um, and I think if they played a few tournaments using that, um, they'd iron out the creases and um, it would be... The, the army to beat, really. It, it, it was it's a really good army. It can be beaten, don't get me wrong. Now that I've played it, I can see things that we could have done, um, which would have benefited us. And we were so preoccupied in the things that looked more scary than they actually were, um, that we, we didn't concentrate on what we should have been concentrating on. But, by the way, that's taking nothing away from uh, Ed and Will. Like I say, very experienced players, and they uh, deserve to win, and they did win. So we lost game one. 
game two, we drew um, Owen, Owen Fitzpatrick and Ben, um, two players who I've played before. Um, Owen, lovely guy, get on really well with him. Ben, the uh, <laughs> the silent type, but he's a, again a lovely guy, lovely pair of pair of pair of guys, good friends they are. Um, they kind of come to a lot of tournaments together, um, so they've kind of got that rapport already. So Alan joined me on um, this game, um, and in this scenario, you roll um, for deployment and then alternate. But the way that you alternate is you you start in the corner of each board. So, for example, um, if I chose the southwest corner, I'd deploy half my force in the southwest corner and the other half in the northeast corner. So you're at opposite corners, um, which for them was tough because they had late town uh, with uh, Bard's kids, no Bard, which I was quite surprised at. Gandalf was the leader and the captain, I think, and a load of late town of uh, Owen Alfred. And they had then had Treebeard with two Ents and a couple of Wolveses. So they had all their late town in one corner and all the Wolveses in the other corner. We had our goblins with like, loads of captains and Grinner and Goblin King and Scribe. Uh, so we had lots of might to march towards the late towners. We had uh, Bolg on his wag who could march towards the late towners. We then had the rest of the Gundabad who could stomp to the middle and kind of sort of just stand there and wait for things to hit, but make sure that we had always had mu three times as much. Excuse me, three times as much on the centre where the objective was than them, and it kind of went to plan. Uh, it's a close call with Bolg. Bolg burnt through his might very easily because he had a chance to hurry combat into their leader. And that didn't go to plan. I don't think he inflicted a wound, and it, it, by that time he was he was down to no might. But luckily, um, we managed to get through. Um, Goblin Town is the kind of force where if your infantry, like Lay Town, um, isn't great, and you've got nothing there that can take out a lot of goblins in one go, and there's no kind of threat, if you like, that I'd be worried about, I will just swarm you and having the scribe there so that I could bring goblins on from their corner um, and just sort of preoccupy them and stop them thinking about exactly what's going on was a massive help. In the end we won that. Um, that was a it was a big victory but it was a great game. I, you know um, Owen and Ben I, every game I play with them I have a bit of banter with them and you know just just make it fun really as, as much as you can. Um, so that was a really good game. So that was a win. So we were on, at this point, four wins and a loss. Um, final game, table two. What am I doing? Table two, that's all I'm, I don't know. Um, but we played um, Hayden and... Who was it? Hayden and...